Everyone remembers their first car. That sense of freedom will never be rivaled. But what if you had to buy a first car now in 2020? What would you pick? You'd want something fast, right? You'd want something loud and slidey, something your friends will think is really cool, or maybe just something reliable to get you back and forth to school. But let's be honest, a Hellcat or a Fast and Furious Super just probably ain't gonna happen unless you're Jadem Sith, the richest boy in the world. Well, I got some good news for you, big bros here to help. Today we're going to tell you our picks for the top 11 best first cars for car enthusiasts. People like you and people like me. Signal, mirror, over the shoulder, go. This is Big thanks to our friends at eBay Motors for sponsoring this episode. I have a problem. Looking at cars that I can't afford on the internet. Am I going to buy this $45,000 AE86? No. Am I gonna look at the ad 14 times a day? Hard yes. And after years of using other sites to track down cars, my editor Max goes, you know, I bought my Taurus show on eBay. And I was like, eBay? I've heard of it. And with eBay Motors new app, I can look at the cars I wanna buy anywhere I want, especially on the toilet. They got this thing called VPP, which stands for Vehicle Purchase Protection. And a free vehicle report from AutoCheck. What this means is the car that you bought is the car that shows up or someone's gonna pay. Yeah. eBay's got your back, dude. So go download the eBay Motors app, click the link in the description below. If you buy a car, you'll get a $100 gift certificate for eBay. Yeah, I know what you're saying, it's only 100 bucks, but Jesse bought an entire Saab for $76, so chill. We think it's really, really cool that eBay Motors wants to work with us. We think this could be a really cool partnership. And if enough of you guys download it, then they'll wanna do more stuff with us in the future. And that means we can make more really cool videos for you guys in the future. Stuff we haven't even freaking thought about before, you know? Stuff we can't freaking even imagine yet. You got it. The fourth gen or SN95 Mustang is kind of like the unloved middle child. I can relate. It's not a classic. It's not that modern. It honestly probably aged the worst of all the Mustangs. I think SN95s are still really cool though. They're relatively powerful and they have a lot of potential, but best of all, they're cheap, 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 cheap. So the SN95 gets some hate, but I think that it looks pretty cool. It's just like little, it's a little bubble boy, little Jake Gyllenhaal. Put on some coilovers, lower it, get some Cobra wheels, maybe a cowl induction hood, shine it up real nice, get yourself a nice car. Now the V6 model makes about 190 hertz pers, and the V8 isn't that much better. It only makes 220 slightly buffer ponies, but there is a ton of stuff to make your Stangs reverse. There's a ton of parts out there, and like I said, they're cheap, and you can get a lot of them at AutoZone. So this is a great first car if you wanna learn how to wrench on something. And if you still need some convincing, here are some sick SN95 Mustangs owned by Donut fans. Now, when I was a kid back in the olden days, old Volvos were basically the go-to option for cheap, reliable, and pretty cool first cars. My dad had a red 240 with a five-speed in it. A Volvo 240 was the first car that I worked on. It's the first car that I learned to drive in, and it's the first car that I ever did a burnout in. Shouts to Nathan Steinke. He was there for all three of those major life events with me. He was my first car friend. 240s make great first cars. They have a reputation for being tanks because they're actually I think literally classified as tank and some of them even came with turbos if you're lucky enough to find one You can get a really good Volvo 240 in good shape for under five grand still and because Volvo has stuck so close to its early boxy designs Even with their modern cars. They're never gonna all of a sudden become uncool all right, there's a ton of really cool Volvos like the V70R or the 850 T5R but for me the Volvo 240 is just the 
Volvo. It's rear wheel drive. It's super simple. And the engine bays are huge. If you want to go crazy down the line with some sort of not nasty motor swap, plus they're super practical. So you can fit all of your extracurricular activities equipment in there. You can fit so much LARPing gear in a Volvo 240. Ask Nolan how he knows. Oh, sorry. Should I say Rundin the Brave? Okay, this one's one for all my truck bros out there. I'm talking about the best, one of the best little trucks ever. The legendary Ford Ranger. Now they made a bunch of different types of Rangers. And uh, so there's a bunch to choose from. We go way more in the depth in our video about cheap trucks. Uh, I'll put the link for that in the description below. But we had to bring this truck back because it is such a great choice for a first car. You can pick these up for a couple grand in good used condition. They're easy to work on. Tons of room in the engine bay for you to get in and mess around with and get your knuckles all greasy. And of course, you got a handy dandy truck bed for doing some truck things if truck things are the kinds of things that you want to do. Now, I just want to take a moment and apologize to our Australian friends, including Bailey Gulimis. In a previous episode of this show, I said that the Holden Malou was a ute with a tray, and I have since been informed that it is not a tray, but it is a tub, okay? So the Holden Malou is not a truck with a bed, it's not even a ute with a tray, it's a ute with a tub. Again, I am so sorry, and I'm going to write this wrong, and as a symbol of my humility, I have adopted this kangaroo. This is a real thing that I did. I paid for it. I named him Nolan too. And now he's officially the fifth Joey that works at Donut. Literally all of our writers somehow are named Joe. Okay, now I know that this is one of the crazier first cars on this list. It's definitely not gonna make your mom happy, but hear me out. You can buy one of these for 3500 ish dollars but just be aware you might have to get your knuckles a little greasy on this bad boy so much so that they're gonna start calling you greasy knucks when you walk into your home room like they'll be like hey what's up greasy knucks and you're just gonna own it you're gonna be like what's up yeah my knucks is greasy i drive a corvette am i smart not necessarily am i cool Pretty cool. Chevy made the C4 Corvette from 1983 all the way through 1996. So there's a ton of them out there. And guys, did I even mention that this car has the most sickest feature available anywhere on any car? They also came with Julius Caesar's favorite set of wheels, salad shooters. They look good on pretty much every car you put them on. Here, here's them on a um, BMW E30. Here they are on a Volkswagen Golf. Here they are on a C4 Corvette. During its run, the C4 came with one of six different V8s. So before you buy one, figure out which V8 it's got. I like the LT1 the best. It's a sweet spot between price and performance. Plus they're bulletproof and the coolest car is a car that runs, but if anything ever did go wrong, Chevy put the LT1 in a ton of different cars. So parts are easy to find and cheap, and you don't mind hopping under that hood. You're greasy nuts. Your knuckles are already greasy. Now, I know, I am aware, that this one is a little silly, all right? It's definitely the least sensible car on this list. You can't really fit any LARPing gear in it. But I think that the idea of a Corvette for your first car is hilarious and awesome. Miata. We talk about Miatas a lot on Donut. Too much, if you ask me. I mean, we have an entire other show where all we do is talk about a freaking Miata. Apparently, it's not enough to have a whole show dedicated to Miatas. We got to talk about it on my shows, too. Okay, there's no denying that a Miata is an awesome little car and it would make a great first car for someone who wants to develop their skills as a driver. They're rear wheel drive, they're really well balanced, parts are cheap, and you can almost definitely afford one of these things. They're pretty cool. I guess they're pretty cool, even though I look like Donkey Kong when I drive one. Now I know that the NA came with sweet, sweet big boy pop-up headlights, and that's the one that everyone really wants right now, but the NB, is basically the same car and i even think that the nc is pretty good looking especially with the hard tops and wheels all three gens are really fun and can be found for cheap so what if you have more than one friend and you want the opposite 
of a Miata. Something that can fit more than a single backpack. Something that has any power at all. Maybe, you know, this one's a wild card. Maybe you should consider this might not be the most romantic car on this list. It's not a C4 Corvette, but if you're looking for something big, luxurious, reliable, safe, with a V8 that costs less than four grand, you might want to consider one of these boys. Now, this car was made between 99 and 2006, and it was basically America's answer to the comfy European cars like the BMW 3 Series and the Audi A4. And as you'd expect from a car which was trying to go to war with the Germans for their luxury sedan market domination, the LS was full of fancy stuff like technology and it even had independent double wishbone suspension which is pretty cool it handles pretty good on the inside the ls was a symphony of leather and wood like an old library which is kind of like the internet but instead of being filled with websites it's filled with books you ever heard of them maybe you should crack one open every once in a while help you with your vocabulary this car is a lot like nolan Okay, hear me out. It's sensible, it's responsible, it's something that your parents can trust, but don't be fooled. Because just like Nolan, underneath, it's, it's a, a hunky muscle, muscle car, car boyfriend. boyfriend. Behind its understated exterior lives an absolutely ravenous secret, a 3.9 liter V8 that pumps out about 300 Herspers. If you want a manual, you can get one, but only with the 240 horsepower V6. But that is a decent amount of power. Let's take our time. We just got our driver's licenses. This is our first car. Baby steps. I'm not calling you a baby. All right? You're a young adult, all right? but just 240. I don't even own a car that makes 240 horsepower. At number five is the Subaru Forester. Now, when you heard me say Subaru, you were probably thinking that I was going to hit you up with an STI or a WRX, not a little SUV boxy boy. But hear me out, because the Forester is a compact SUV, i.e. a fat hatchback, hiding a sexy sideways secret. Below that sensible boxy body are many of the sweet, Crazy gizzards from the legendary Subaru WRX. Of all the models that you can get in the US, the XT Limited Turbo is the one you want because it's got the turbocharged flat four with 230 horsepower and it also had a sunroof. So when you're driving around, you can put your little hands out there and be free. And it had a leather interior so you can burn your little bum bum all summer long. This car is basically a WRX without a big rear wing or a huge exhaust and it's all hidden under a big, safe SUV body that your parents are gonna love. And more importantly, it's a lot more affordable and easier to find than WRX, and insurance is gonna be cheaper too, so that's just smart. And if you really want to, and you get a little wild hair up your, up your goat, you can swap a bunch of the STI stuff fits on this car so you can rally up your Forester and have a really cool little sleeper. The E46 M3 is a great freaking car, but it is a really expensive car too. But there's good news because you can have its slightly less muscular brother, the 330 Ci, for about a quarter of the price. Okay, for just a few grand, you can buy an E46 330 Ci with the ZHP package. Now, if you can find one, this is the one you want. It's the performance package one and it comes with a bunch of cool little bits like a cool steering wheel it's got a six speed it's got different diff ratio it's got firmer springs it also has in my opinion one of the greatest shift knobs of all time the 330 ci had the m54 inline six which was basically the last really good reliable engine that bmw ever made and it made 235 horsepower you know how e30s were cheap for a while and then they got expensive then e36s were really cheap now they're getting expensive too e46s are actually cheap right now they're really fun to drive every day they're fun to take to the track and you can even make them into drift cars with only adding like a couple things I'm talking like angle kit maybe a, a handbrake it's like my great 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 grandma used to say all right be smart buy a 2004 bmw 330 ci my first car that i ever owned was an s13 240 sx and i think that the 350 is a modern day equivalent to the 240 except it is way way faster there are a couple versions of the 3.5 liter v6 that came in this car and if you get one that was made in 2006 or newer you'll be good for a very reliable 300 hertz which is plenty 
Okay, guys, that is a lot. You kids all think you're supermans, but you're not even regular mans yet. You're teens. Teens. I really like this chassis. We own two of them here at Donut, and we modified the absolute living crap out of them on our other show, High Low. If you haven't watched that, then you should. I really do think that it's the best thing that we've ever done. And as we've shown on High Low, there's a ton of parts for these things, and you can build one to do just about anything you wanna do. Basically, it's like, I think the 330CI and the 350Z are the best value that you can get in a sports car right now, and they're relatively interchangeable. Like. From day to day, I don't know which one I would want more. We are releasing a shirt for your car, AKA the Four Horses Sticker Pack. I'm really excited about these stickers. I think they came out really, really cool. They're all really high quality, and the only place that you can get them is at donutmedia.com. I love the Volkswagen Golf. For all those wondering, this car is my son. We share no blood, but he is my life. I am proud of him and owning him has been the best and most rewarding thing that I have ever done in my life. He came from Germany, legally, of course. I've owned a ton of golfs. Mark 1s, Mark 2s, Mark 3s, but the one that I think is the best first car is the generation that I've never actually owned, the Mark IV, and not just because it smells like crayons. I think it's a great balance of being kind of old and fun, but still has a lot of modern safety stuff, like airbags. My Mark III, is scary to drive. It's like driving around in a freaking office chair. If I get in a wreck, I am 100% donezo. You can get the Mark IV with a tiny little four cylinder. You can get them with a turbo diesel that gets really great gas mods. But if you want a hatch that is a little hotter, you have two really good options. You got your VR6 and you got your 20 valve 1.8T. The VR6 sounds amazing and the 1.8T is super tunable. And remember guys, 1.8T never lose. There were some cool versions of the Mark IV too. Both the 337 and the 20th anniversary editions came with factory Recaro seats, big wheels, and some cool like lips and stuff. Uh, the 20th was available in jazz blue, which is a sweet blue color, and also a Mola yellow. The Jetta is the exact same car, but it has a trunk in case you want to haul around your LARPing gear. Get yourself a Mark IV. Bing, bang, boom. Your coolest kid in the cafeteria. Moving on. Moving on! Coming in at number one. One. What I think is the best first car for a new driver. The car that I tell everyone to buy when they ask me what kind of car they should buy. As much Accord as you can afford and not just because it rhymes, right? I was going to put a Civic in at number one, but that seemed really similar to the Golf and it'll probably get stolen. You want a Civic? Get a Civic. They're great but they get stolen. Integras are great too, but uh, that'll definitely get stolen. The Honda Accord has been in constant production since 1976. They figured these things out, all right? They start every time. They run like tops with minimal maintenance. And the coolest car, like I said, is the car that runs. And there really is an Accord for everybody in every budget. It's a great blend of sportiness and practicality. They came with some really great engines. They have really good acceleration. They look really good. They're cheap to work on. Now I know we've been talking about V8s and cars with turbos and stuff, but I think the Accord really is the most well-rounded boy and it really is the best first car that you can get in my opinion. Look at this one, look at this one, look at this one, look at this one, look at this one. They're cool! cool. Now, no matter what your first car is, whether it's something from this list or something completely different or just whatever your mom used to drive and hand it down to you, it's gonna be special because it's your first car. And if you aren't in the position to buy a car yet, that doesn't mean that you can't be part of this community. I didn't have a car for almost two years uh, as an adult when I just skateboarded everywhere. Car community is my life. It's an amazing, diverse group. We all come from different places. We all have different interests. But what draws us together is a love and respect for cars and one another. And I'm really excited to have all of you on board. So if you're looking for your perfect first car but can't find anything in your town, go look on the eBay Motors app and look everywhere. Guys, here's a little bit of a secret, all right? You can ship a car basically anywhere in the United States for about 800 bucks. I've done it. Find someone local to the car that you trust to go drive it and uh, yeah, ship it to your house. Thank you guys so much for watching this 
video and every other video on Donut Media. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that like button. Follow me across social media at James Pumphrey to get some, you know, I'm, I've been known to leak some stuff going on. Follow Donut on Instagram and Twitter at Donut Media. If you want another list of really fun, cheap cars, check out this episode of The Wheelhouse hosted by my friend Nolan. I really like that show and that's a really great video. I love you.